Okay, now let's talk about the platform for building this community. Okay, uh, I will use um, the, the there are a lot of frameworks available if you check it out, social media framework. You have tons and tons of different frameworks, you'll get confused. So, I'm just using one some, uh, that I've, I've been using in the past. This was developed by um, Michael Hyatt. He used to be the chairman of uh, uh, Nelson Thomas Publishers. And he's now a, a, an author on, uh, himself. And he, he came up with the idea that um, as, as a marketer, as somebody offering something to the, uh, to the public, you need a platform. And the platform he defined as a stage that gives your message leverage and visibility. So in, in our case, we're here. I have my platform. No, I don't have a platform. But you know, since I'm, I'm here in front, here's my platform for saying my message. But there are only less than 15 people here listening to, to, to my message. So what you want to do is create a platform so that your message is being heard by a lot more people. Okay? And there are five steps, five major elements in making your platform. He said, you must start with wow. He's a marketing guy, okay? You start with wow, which means you must create a compelling offer. And then you prepare to launch. And this is all about branding. Uh, so that people will understand what you're about. You build your home base, and basically it's about putting up your website or a blog, and then setting up all the other peripheral uh, uh, social media accounts. And then you expand your reach. You build your presence in social media, you must have a content strategy, and you build your subscriber list. So this is now creating, building your community. And then you engage your tribe, you engage them in conversation, you build trust. So these are the five major elements. For our uh, purpose today, I will condense this into four. So we'll talk about uh, the offer, prepare to launch, we build the home base, and then we, we, um, we join these two together in terms of our content strategy. Okay. We started well. At this point, what we will do is, um, I want you to think about your project. I'll talk about a number of principles here, and then I'll bring the question back to you, because I want you to apply the principles you, you learn here. Use it in your project. Okay, so it, it would help if you're you have a piece of paper, you have you know, Word document open, because I want you to start thinking of your project. Wow, <clears throat> okay. Uh, it's about creating a compelling product. Now, when we talk about product, it can be a physical product, or a service, or a message, or an advocacy, or you know, a fundraising project, okay? Um, and no amount of marketing savvy or salesmanship can overcome a weak product. So this is the fundamental thing that you start with. You must have a compelling product. Okay? A product uh, you have to develop a product you are delighted to offer. You must be proud. You, have, you must be happy with your, with, with your offer. You must be excited with what you're offering to to, to people and it should have it should create a sense of awe and you know and wonder and excitement and you know when, when people hear about your project they may say wow I'm gonna do it again no um, basically what we want to evoke is the kind of reaction a small baby gets <laughs> when you see something new <gasps> Everything is new to a baby, right? <laughs> uh, a rubber ducky, <gasps> wow! A, a piece of towel, <gasps> wow! <laughs> Everything is new, 
everything is remarkable, everything is all inspiring. But if we can achieve that even with you know, a 60-year-old guy, if we can evoke that kind of response, then you know, we create a compelling product. Learn to recognize wow moments. There are 10 points here. Um, there should be an element of surprise, which means the product should exceed the expectation of a person. It should, be, it should create delight, amazement, wonder, awe. I try to remember the last time that you were in a state of awe. What was it that you know, evoked that kind of response? When was the last time you, you know, you just said, oh, wow, that's amazing. When was the last time you had it? And do you remember what, you know, what made you make that reaction? Any of you? Oh, the Grand Canyon. No, I haven't been there. Yet. <laughs> I've seen a photo of the Grand Canyon. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, I've been at the um, at the peak of a very tall building in Hong Kong, and, and I looked at the, at the top. Oh, wow! Kanta. Okay, that that's that's all inspiring. Or when I was much younger, and I saw this. Very pretty girl. <gasps> wow! She became my wife. And uh, <laughs> um, there are things also. There's things that you hear about people that you talk with, or stories, or things that people have done or are doing that somehow you know touch a, a deep part in our hearts. They resonate uh, at a deep level. They can cause goosebumps. We can, you know, there are things that, that we hear about that cause this. Like for example, when I, uh, um, when I heard about the story of um, uh, young kids who want to go to school in Zamboanga, and they have to cross a river, and they, you know, their their school clothes are in plastic bags, and they have to cross a river, and sometimes they go sleep as. Uh, you're almost going to, to drown just to cross a river. When they cross it, then they change clothes just to go to school. And somebody thought of the idea, what, why don't they ride on a boat? So they came up with a project of, you know, of getting people to buy a boat for them and so that these young kids can, instead of crossing the river with their physical bodies, all they do is ride a boat. They painted it yellow, and it created so much hope. It's the yellow boat of hope that brought these kids to school clean and dry. And somehow, that, that, you know, that project evoked a, you know, a mini wow in me. Wow! That's, that's, that's amazing. They thought of that. And, you know, and now th that those boats are being used by the, the parents of those kids for fishing, so it created a livelihood for them. That's a double wow for me. Okay? So there are stories of you know, projects, uh, uh, good works people do that, that you know, provoke a sense of wow. Because they resonate something deep in our hearts. Uh, there's a transcendent experience. You, um, it reminds you of your purpose or meaning. It, it helps you get in touch with the divine, a sense of God is here. Ah, wow. Um, um, when, when I'm in, in, uh, uh, in the beach alone, and uh, it's, uh, it's getting dark, and you know the the whole sky is a, you know, a, a a beautiful palette of you know of reds and violets and pinks and 
you know, all, an, an interplay of colors in the sky. You, you begin to get reminded that they're saying, there's somebody out there who did this, who painted this great painting. You know, there, there are moments like that in our lives, and you know, if there are things that we can do that somehow remind people of God, then it can be a wow moment for people. Um, uh, there, there are things that also help us clarify things, what, what's more important, what's really essential in life. And when, when we do get that, you know, it, it creates a wow moment for, for certain people. Um, there are things that are timeless. There are things that people do that we know this, this thing is, you know, this will never grow old. This thing will always be important. And it reminds us that there are things that are uh, that eternal, that, are, that will never go away. And, and they're often um, uh, universal, even if it's a particular story. It reminds us of a universal story, a bigger story of a story of, of, of people, of, of humanity. And there's a sense of longevity, it will never wear off, it will endure, it will never, you know, people will never get tired of hearing the story. And for, for some who are part of that story, there is a sense of privilege. But I'm, I, you know, I feel proud to be part of this story. If, 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 if something wonderful is happening and I happen to be right at the very center of it, and I know that, you know, this great experience cannot be, uh, you, you can't replicate it. It only happens, you know, once every, every 10 years or something. And I'm, you know, I'm privileged to be part of this. This is something that gives, you know, a sense of privilege, a sense of uh, um, uh, being part of an elite group. Yeah. There are things that, things, things you, you can do, the project, that can create that kind of um, feeling, it seems. And that can create a sense of wow for me. And I have to bring back the question to you. What's your wow moment? You also have to, have to, to give it a memorable name. That wow moment, uh, that wow project of yours, you have to give it a memorable name. Um, the right name can make or break you. <laughs> you give it the wrong name uh, and it's not, it's not recognizable. Uh, people will forget it. You have to, you have to give it the right name. Uh, there's a guide that uh, Michael Hyatt uh, gave. You can use pink as a guide, meaning it should give a promise. Like our project was a promise that we will bless a child. So it's a promise. Or it creates intrigue. It creates a sense of, you know, um, it evokes um, interest and wanting to know more about it. Our project in FEBC, Cross Parents at PH, um, because it has a double meaning uh, uh, a swirling of current events, and at the same time, there's a cross out there, uh, the cross in the midst of current events, that's what, that's what we were trying to, to convey. But people wanted to ask about what's, what does that mean? What, what is it all about? Or it can talk about the need, it clarifies the need. So, um, save the children or uh, compassion Philippines. Um, there's a, a, a clearly put out need there. Or uh, the content of the project itself. So, for example, Habitat for Humanity, it's all about putting up houses. Um, for Response Radio, our project in FEBC, it's all about disaster response using radio. So that's the main content of what we're trying to do. How about your project? What's the name of your project? I'd like you to, to seriously think about it. So, if I'm going to use our case study, our Blessed Child project, how, why did we come up with this project? What's the situation in Claridale? Okay. So, when I was pastoring the church there, it's the Followers of Christ Fellowship. 
uh, there were many communities there uh, living by the, uh, some of them are living beside the creek, um, and some of them are living in, in shanties, and they're among the poorest of the poor. And we, uh, we, were, we were able to invite some of them to attend church. And when we were uh, uh, interacting with them, we realized that most of the children there have no idea what Christmas is all about. Because they never celebrated Christmas. Because they didn't have the money to celebrate a proper Christmas. So they didn't even bother thinking about Christmas at all. So for these young kids, Christmas was just you know, a long vacation a long school break, okay? That's why it is. Um, they, they, and we were thinking, we were talking among ourselves because most of us are middle class and we were talking about our best Christmas memories and we talked about Noche Buena and opening gifts and as young, as still kids, how much joy it gave us. Just even remembering it, okay? Just putting up the... The Christmas tree is, you know, it evokes a lot of uh, great memories for me. Uh, I, I, um, uh, uh, wrapping the Christmas lights around the Christmas tree, you know, and then putting all of the gifts there and the sense of anticipation and excitement of, <laughs> can, we, can we open the gifts now? No, it's only the 23rd. No, not yet, okay? And you have to, have to wait until the 25th when you can finally open the gifts, you can celebrate with the Noche Buena. And I remember a, you know, a table full of, full of goodies and food and we just feasted on it. And I, you know, it's fresh on my mind because as a young kid, that was just, you know, it gave me such sheer joy as a young kid. And we, we felt, what would it be like if we, you know, we gave a Christmas party for these young kids that they will never forget in their life. And we, we want to make sure that they connected with the Christmas story of, of God giving a gift of, uh, of His Son, Jesus Christ. He made that strong connection, then they will understand what Christmas is all about, and then we share them the gospel, they will get it. That's what we're hoping for. That's, that's, what it all, that's what Blessed Child is all about. That was our, it, it, it helped us understand uh, what we're trying to do. And we knew in our hearts, remembering the wow moments of Christmas, uh, of Christmas past, we knew we wanted to give that same memory to these young kids. That was the wow thing for us. How about you? What's your... What's the sense of wow in your project? I'd like to ask you now. In the project you're thinking about, what's the wow element here? 